Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. And we've had some viewers write in and ask us about aluminum welding. And I can tell you aluminum has uh, been a problem for welding for years and years and years. A lot of times it has to do with filler materials. So we have done what I call a blind test on filler materials. And here's what I'd like for you to do if you're, uh, if you're welding aluminum and you have a filler there. Uh, a couple of things we can do. One is I like to do a dry wipe test just to see how much smut is on the aluminum because aluminum oxide is a real problem in welding and if you've got any oils of any kind you need to get them off there. So I picked two premium filler materials just to show you that you get it at random and we selected these filler materials, purchased them directly from a distributor so they had no idea that we were doing a test on them but I've had great success with these filler materials uh, and at the end I'll disclose to you which one is which. Right now, I don't know. I had the director of this show put it all together, give me the filler materials, and I'm gonna see if I can tell a difference. So I like to start off and you know, just have a, a clean rag or a, a napkin and just do a wipe test. Run this thing all the way through. And, and if you look, you can see a little bit of smut, a little bit of something that's there. And so I'm going to go over here, do the same thing. Don't know which one, don't know which brand it is, but do exactly the same test. So here's, here's what I see so far. I've got a little bit more residue on this filler. Now that doesn't mean that it's bad filler, it just means that it's not quite as clean as this one. So this run absolutely ran cleaner. So go ahead make sure that you go ahead and wet this with acetone and just by doing this you can sometimes get rid of that porosity that you're having so I'm gonna go ahead and do this on all the filler materials get them nice and clean Okay, so from my objective testing, there, there's no question that this rod right here is coming out a little bit cleaner out of the package. This one here had a little bit more residue on it, but I've got it wiped down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up and I'm going to run this filler. I'm going to run a bead on plate. Now this material is cold right now, so it's important that I run a bead on plate just to show you how it wells. And what I'm looking for is that it doesn't have any porosity, it doesn't have any floaties, any, anything that just looks abnormal floating to the top. Uh, so the oxides ought to be totally off of it. And I'm looking for the edge of the weld. I'm looking for it to wet out very nicely. So it gets liquid, it holds the, the liquid for a long time, and you'll just see a difference. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my gear on, and I'm gonna run this bead on plate with this filler, and then I'm gonna run a bead on plate with this filler. Now in between, I'm gonna make sure that the, the, uh, the fillers are, are welded on one side, cool down, and then I'll weld on the other side. So let's get started. Okay, I've got this uh, 4043 filler, it's 1 16th diameter. What I'm gonna do is a bead on plate right here. I'm just gonna run three or four inches. Now the, the uh, material is cold right now, so it's gonna have a different reaction than when I run a second bead where it's already preheated. So let's take a look at the, uh, the action that we get out of it. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit of preheating on the material. And you can see that uh, I'm starting to get a puddle. I'm in no hurry. I just want to make sure the oxides are off so I get a true representation of the filler material. Okay, so I'm dabbing, 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 dabbing. It's running nice and clean. Yeah, 
Now, yes, it heats up. It works out a little bit nicer. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, weld about another inch or so. Just dab, dab, dab. Okay, I'm going to come to the end, terminate my weld, back off slowly, and stop. All right, I'm only only hesitating for about 15 or 20 seconds. I'm going to run another bead right next to it. Now this piece is already preheated. Okay, so we're getting rid of the oxide with the machine. Now this material is running very, very nice. You can see there's very liquid. You know, the silicon that we have in this filler material helps wet it out nicer. And this is running good. So I'm getting near the end of the weld. Add a little extra filler. Back out with lower amperage. Let it solidify. And we're done. Okay, now we're going to cool this material off and we're going to take it back down to room temperature and then I'm going to do the same test on the right side of this using this filler material. Okay, now we're back. What I've done is I've cooled down this part and it's at room temperature, I'd say somewhere in the 70 to 80 degree range. So I'm going to do the same test, but I'm going to use the filler on my right. Okay, I gotta get a little bit of preheat in here to get the color going. And now I got the color going. So it's just a dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab. Welding really nicely. termination and back off and now that everything is preheated I'll go ahead and do the second weld Welding very, very nicely. And we're finished. Okay, now that we've done the welding, I want to show you the objective evidence, what I look for in the quality of a weld. Now, first of all, I've got this filler, this filler. I, I ran the left side. I'm looking in the puddle to see if I see any interruptions whatsoever, if I see any porosity or any bubbling or anything like that. And I didn't see that on either one of these fillers. So, first of all, I want to give both of these fillers the uh, Mr. Tig approval. They welded up very nicely. So is there a slight edge? Uh, and the answer is yes, there was a slight edge on this one. Uh, this filler right here, if you look at the edge of the weld, not in the center of the weld, if you look at the edge of the weld, how well did it wet in to the parent material? Both of them did a great job. This one had just a little bit extra. Also, when I first did the clean test, coming from the package, it's clean. It's cleaner. So this one is the winner. 
Again, both of them are very, very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to announce them as the winner, um, and I'm going to reach up and see who it is. And the winner is a company called Indalco. So we're going to continue to do these tests. Um, this one is a winner also. It, it did pass my test, so you need to know who that is. And that is Washington Alloy. Uh, again, congratulations, guys. They both did very, very well. Um, and when you start talking about costs and premium filler materials, it needs to be a consideration. Uh, this filler right here, um, you'll see a range. It's somewhere in the uh, the seven to ten dollar range. It's in the one sixteenth diameter. Now, the smaller you draw this down, typically the higher the cost. So make sure you do a direct comparison. Uh, this filler, uh, it is a premium filler. Uh, they they spend a lot more time in cleaning and packaging, and it'll it'll add about twenty twenty five percent to your cost. But when you start getting into X ray quality, that's what we're going to investigate next. So this is continuing. Uh, we're going to go from, from the everyday welding that you're doing, and I can't tell the difference on the everyday welding. It's just slight differences. We're going to take this and we're going to test it in x-ray. We're going to see what kind of micro porosity that we see, and it'll be in one of our uh, later sections. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. <laughs>